Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus, SUV Talk, and let's go to my laundry room. I never thought I'd say that in video, <laughs> but we are. So as you know, I have a 2022 Ford M50 Lightning out in the driveway this week. I'm doing a seven day review on it. And part of that review process, I'm talking a lot about charging, a lot of different things going on because I have a Silverado EV on order and I have to figure this out. You know, I've been a journalist now for about 12 years. I do truck and SUV content only, but trucks and SUVs are becoming more EV, so I need to figure out my charging. So I thought it'd be interesting to bring you guys along on the journey. Now, I've gotten a lot of comments in the first couple of videos I've done, and one of the big comments I got from my EV advocate friends are like, you just have to dry an 11, just plug it in there, and you have 220, you're done. I thought, okay, well, that's simple. You know, I could do my dryers right here, garage is right there, you know, that's an easy fix. I can just plug it in, don't have to do all the wiring right now because copper prices are really high. But that's not as easy as they say it's gonna be. Let me show you why. So, my dryer is stacked, and there's my plug back there. So it's kind of not so easy to get to. Then I pull it out and I have this end. See a little half square in there? That's a NEMA, we'll talk, I'll show you on screen which one it is. There's NEMA 30 and NEMA 50. And see this, that plug there? This is the adapter that goes onto the mobile charger Ford Sends with lightning. And so I can plug it into 220. But I can't plug it into my dryer. Even though my dryer is 220, the plug is different. Now, <laughs> that's, that's also thinking about like, all right, so let's say I were to get that plug and get straightened out. I don't want to change that plug, but hey, there's adapters. Okay, so you go to Amazon. I've been at Amazon. I just got back from Menards and Home Depot looking for stuff. You can buy some 40, 30 to 40, 50 adapters for 30, 40 bucks. Okay, and then I think, yeah, right there, 14, 30 is that odd shape, 1450 is what comes with the EV adapter. And so you can see they have all this stuff going on. So, okay, fine. I get the adapter. Okay, so I mean, this is my, my thought process going through this stuff. So I get my cord coming in here. I unplug my dryer. I plug in my, basically it's a pigtail adapter. And then I've got to run the cord here. Right from the stairway, underneath, I guess I'm gonna put a blanket or something on top of somebody trips. Then I go out this door. This is my garage door. I go out this door. And then the idea here, I guess, is drive the truck in all the way and park it as close, you know, as close as I could. And then run my cable. Well, my cable won't fit underneath that door, so I gotta leave the door open to get plugging in here. And then the new F-150 and the new crew cab trucks are longer than my garage. So I can't shut the garage door while I have it charging with this door open. So I'm gonna put a doggy gate across so my dog doesn't escape when this door is open, that door, and then I plug it in. Or I guess I can get like a long extension cord and I could theoretically go here, go here, go out the window, <laughs> go around and over there. So yeah. This whole idea, I can plug it in my dryer or I plug it in my oven, that's kind of bonkers. Now, I also could, theoretically, I could pull that outlet out behind the dryer. I could run a wire up here, go up through my attic, come down, go over here, and I have to be in my garage. I could fish it down to the wall, and I could put a plug in there. Now, that's not a bad idea, except for what happens when I need to plug in my vehicle and I also run my dryer. Now they make an adapter, I just saw on Amazon, it was like 200 bucks, that it'll trip back and forth. So if you start the dryer or start the EV, it'll turn off either one. I think it, it turned off the dryer. So you can plug in your car, because you can't, you can't charge your EV and run your dryer. There's no power in that amperage. So you can't do that either. And I'm like 230 bucks for that, jeez. And the other thing I think about with this dryer cord conversation is what if you go to somebody else's house? You know, everybody talks about public charging as a mess, and it is. But people don't talk about the fact that if I go to my friend's house, so let's go see my friend in Denver. I'm gonna drive, you know, 180 miles to get there. When I get there, I need to charge. So what are my choices here? I can go find a DC fast charger and sit outside their house or have them come out, sit with me in a truck for two hours or hour, whatever, how much range I need, right? Because you're not gonna charge empty to full. You're gonna charge enough range to get back home. So that means I'm not gonna drive the truck around the town because I can't, I need the range to get home. So we're gonna to go to his house, hang out, use his vehicle to drive around. 
I'm gonna have to do a charger or I'm gonna do 110 from his house. Or I can bring my charging adapter and if he's got a first floor laundry, not a basement laundry, I could probably plug into his outlet, but then it creates some interesting questions about, well, is that rude? Is it rude to go to somebody's house to plug into their wall outlet and basically get free gasoline from them? That's kind of what it is. I mean, you're, it, it, so then how do you pay them? So if I plug into your house overnight, do I give you like 20 bucks? <laughs> Just, it's, it's so many interesting questions. And again, this only works if your dryer and stuff is on a good place to get to it. Somebody said, well, just pull up behind your oven. You got 220 there too. And I'm like, well, not every oven is electric. Some of them are natural gas. But also, I'm not pulling out my oven. I don't want to get all the crumbs. Have you pulled your oven lately? Yes, yeah, sir, you have it. It's full of grease and crumbs and stuff. So I'm going to pull the oven out from the wall, run my cord, run my cord across, run my cord across, run my cord out there, and do some massive extension cord. That really doesn't work. So this idea that you can just use your dryer plug to plug in your EV is really a lot more complex than people think it's going to be. And then if you look at the cords here, there are different dryer cords based on what year your dryer got installed and what year your house was built. And there's all sorts of different dryer adapters. And, and then if you go to the RV park to charge up, the RV has different plugins for that. And then um, this is also interesting. Let me show you this. When I had the power boost, I had an F-150 power boost uh, two years ago on the channel, and that had a 220 hookup in the back of the bed, which I surmise this one does as well. Let's go check it out. I think I got the key on me. I do have the key on me. I had to buy this adapter <laughs> to be able to work with the RV and be able to plug in the RV and, and yeah, make it all work. So let's check out the lightning here. Let's take a look at this. And right here is our power on board which is cool, it's 10.2 kilowatts, I've used this quite a bit. And so, where is it? There it is, there. So I had to buy, this adapter is a 220 adapter, and this converts it into an RV plug so I could charge the RV while I was camping. So yeah, when you get the truck, you need to really buy accessories. You need to buy adapters for other people's 220. You need to buy a certain of adapters if you're gonna do RV charging, park charging. Or you need to just decide you're going to do public charging only and rely on the public infrastructure, which so far has been less than awesome for a lot of people that I've talked to. And so you got to make a plan here and how you're going to charge it and what you're going to do with it. Because, yeah, I mean, I could, I can theoretically, I can run a charge, you know, I, I, I can charge at home. I can run 220, which I'll do another video on that when I get that installed. I can put it out here in the garage. I can do a lot of stuff with that. But my question is, what do you do when you get to somebody else's house? and you're gonna party with them or whatever, and you need to get back home. Now in the city, that may be fine, maybe 20 miles back and forth, but I'm in the country, 100 mile driving is not, not rare. Hmm. For your comments down below, what do you guys think? Also check out the videos over here, website down below as well, pickuptrucktalk.com. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you down the road.